and you will find that you've arrived in Frankenstein. Perhaps the Count will find a way to make his monster work today. For if he solves this monster mania, he can return to Transylvania. So welcome where the sun won't shine to the castle of Count Frightenstein. I command you to go with a backhand shot. <laughs> Never do you grow some times. It's Igor. How wonderful. My day is complete. <laughs> Igor, you are late again. And you're all wet. <laughs> You've always been all wet, but just to say, this is little. Little. What were you doing outside, Igor? I'm sorry, Master, but I was outside watering the rocks. Outside watering the rocks? <laughs> yes, Master. But <laughs> well, we have no time for these now. Yes, Master. Well, now it is time to raise the flag and sing our national anthem. Yes, Master. All right, Master. Wait a minute. How did you know my name was Master? I took an uh, educated guess, Master. Educated guess? Impossible. Yeah. Lower the flag. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Quick, 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 quick. I'll count it. One, 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 one. Trans. Sylvania, right, Master? Gory Transylvania. Gory Tory Transylvania. As we go stumbling through. I'm pledged by the sign of the three toothed sloth that I will promise. To obey the laws of the werewolf pack. And the rest, until Brucey lives once again and takes his rightful place in the annals of distinguished monsters. And I can once again return to that most glorious of all places. Hit it! Gory, gory, Transylvania! Gory, gory, Transylvania! Here's a V. Go, stop, and bling. Oh, beautiful, master, beautiful. Of course, you may kiss me. You, you may kiss me. Kiss, 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 kiss. Again, again, again. again. That's enough, that's enough. Don't overdo it. Thank now, you, master. Now, back to the original problem. What is this about watering the rocks? Well, master, you told me yourself. You always wanted a rock garden. That is... the oracle if he would kindly cast her horoscope and tell her of her future and her past. The oracle sat down and said this shouldn't take too long, but he worked until next morning and his answer still seemed wrong. I hope, he told the lady, that you won't break down in tears, but according to my chart, you have been dead for 20 years. All-powerful oracle. I do not agree. <laughs> I see strange and wonderful things. I see myself walking on a tall hill. I see myself dancing among flowers. I see myself singing. <laughs> My goodness gracious. 
I see myself going into debt over those crystal balls. Why can't they make them out of plastic or, or something? Now, it is time to find out whose horoscope we will talk about. Swirling mist whom the gods have kissed. Which sign whose life will fortune twist? Ah, our sign today is Cancer the Crab, yes. And in his worst moments, he gets extremely crabby. <laughs> Straighten up. Cancers are terribly sensitive to any sort of joke at their expense. They like most people, but somehow can't understand that cruelty is, is part of our everyday life. Things like cruelty and humor, cruelty and being rude, and, and things like that upset the sensitive cancer personality. Cancer is almost childish in his trusting people. He expects people to tell the truth and put their cards on the table. After all, that's what cancer people do. But when they find out that that's not everyone as, as honest as himself, oh, he can get very moody and unpleasant. Cancer people are born between June 21st and July 22nd, sandwiched between two wild outgoing signs, Leo and Gemini. He is everything they are not. But he has one quality neither of them have. Persistence. If a problem is to be tackled, cancer will plod through any and all obstacles with a superhuman patience, determination, and persistence to get it done no matter what. You're a good man, Charlie Cancer. Humor! <laughs> oh, must stop that. Now, let's move on to your prediction for the day. Now, don't start spreading your efforts too thin today, Cancer. Just a minute, I'll be right back. <laughs> Mistake Crystal Crystal Ball. Tell me now, tell me all. Yes, yes, here is your prediction. Don't start spreading your efforts too thin today. Chances are you can't do a hundred things all at once, unless you're a Gemini, and that you are not. Also, someone close to you is upset at the games you have been playing with their emotions. They need you as much as you need them, Cancer. So don't risk losing everything on a silly game. Did you hear that, Voodoo? Hmm. Now, let's see what the Voodoo has to say. I want to take those vibes, babe. What's happening? Ah, you're coming in loud and clear. Ah, oh, there's an M. Yes, an M. And there's a T. I, I am not. No, what? Well, what am I then? I am. I am fed up. What are you talking about? You know, I think he's trying to tell me something. Hold on. Z, 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 Z. I think I woke him up. Did you know that parachutes are not dependable? How come? They always lift you down. Oh, did you get it? Did you get it? We will be back in just one moment. Ooga booga! I have no idea. Griselda held a banquet, <laughs> and the highlight of her meal was her creation of the week, Griselda's jelly eel. <laughs> when they brought it into table, several ladies ran away, and the others who had stayed behind were fainting sick or turning gray, cause the jelly they were served in hadn't hardened all the way, and the eels all slithered from the bowl and made their getaway. <laughs>
knowing that in springtime I converse with a crow. <laughs> some real treats for you today. You know something? I was just thinking the other day that Zsa Zsa Gabor may have a lot of nice jewelry, but baby, I got the looks. <laughs> Don't you agree? Mm, who cares? Now, actually, we have a very lovely dish we're going to cook for you today. I don't know why they always say we, because I'm the only one who's doing it. <laughs> a little more humor. Now, what we're going to call this is tomato paste glumped frappe. This ought to be very interesting, believe me. Now, what we're going to do is keep our eyes on the light and dry. <laughs> now, we're going to pour this in and see what happens. Oh, ooh, looks exciting to me. Now, we get that all gookied up. There we go. Now, we add a little flour. Little flour, and that's, where's the old moo juice? Oh, yeah. Need the old moo juice. Excuse me, Polly. I'll bring you a cracker one of these days or something. Now. Let's get lots of that in there. Boy, that's really good. That's cooking her up now. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, I knew it would. Now we just put that down there. Only left you for a second. Now we throw in one potato. Beauty. Okay, now for the last ingredient. I'm losing my show. Now we go over here. Now a lot of people love to use mushrooms in their cooking. Not me, I prefer toadstools. You see, I don't like to spoil them. <laughs> you get it? You know, toy, no, forget it. Anyway. Oh, beauty, beauty. Now, oh, this is coming along lovely, just lovely. Now I think, you know what I've really missed in the last few days? Walt. We're going to try a little more walk. Lovely, lovely. Now, stir and proceed to the cauldron. Here we go, cauldron. Lovely little tasty tidbit for you here. Cauldron, cauldron, toil and trouble, cauldron boy. this. Mitch is getting suspicious. <laughs> Got it. Igor, the Count has done it again. I know what's wrong with Brucey. What, Master? We've got to get the bugs ironed out. Master, Brucey's got too many bugs in it. Wait a minute, Igor. You may be right. Yes, sir. I know what we'll do. We will get our attack trained mouse to catch those little bugs. Mm. Jezemiah. Master, that's not the Don't kind... Don't contradict the count. Jezemiah! Come on, mousey! There are... there... <laughs> Good, you got it. He bit me. Good. <laughs> now, never mind that. This is more important. Yes. All right, Brucey, get in there, Jezemiah, and do what you were taught to do. It's only a matter of time now. Yes. All right, Brucey, walk for me. Walk for the count. <sighs> There's something wrong. Yes, the mouse bit me. That's what's wrong, master. All right, get the mouse out. Right, master. I must think now what we can do. 
We cannot get him out, master. What do you mean? We're too far inside. Get away from there, Igor. Let me see. Yes. You're right. For the first time. But we will use logisticals here. Logisticals? Of course. If we have a mouse. How do people catch mice? With a cat. Very good thinking. Thank get you, me master. a pussy pussy cat. Quickly get me a pussy cat. There, one now. Pussy pussy kitty. Kitty kitty. Kitty kitty. The cat bit. That's a good cat bit me as well, master. Yeah, that's because you do not know how to handle our furry little friends. <laughs> get it you there. too, you see. <laughs> All right, pussy cat. Do your stuff. Get just a my out of there. Good. Now. Now. All right. Brucey, walk for the count. Brucey. This does not seem to work. All right. What we'll do is use more logisticals. If we want to catch a pussycat, what do we use to catch the pussycat? Master. We use a dog. Of course. So get me a dog. Yes, what we need is a new monster, not a dog. But with everything inside of him, what does that make Brucey? Very crowded, master. It is written that a fool and his hair are soon parted, usually in the middle. <laughs> Dr. Petbed is the sort to take all creatures in. Lions, baboons, even pigs that make an awful din. There's roars and squeals and even grunts. It's really quite absurd. You wonder what the doctor does to make his orders heard. He says it was a problem once, but now they rise each morn and all come down for breakfast when I blow the rhino's horn. Yes, well, doctor, if you've got a full of patience, you, I understand. I, yes, I know I'm sorry, but I understand. Oh, you are sending me something. That's fantastical. Oh, that's good. Oh, I can hear the doorbell. Perhaps. It, goodbye, Dr. Petvet. I'll remember. Pets are friends. Yes. Goodbye. Yes. Go goodbye. Can't see who's by the door. Maybe it's a pet for me. Just open the door here. Oh, come in. Look what I got here. Dr. Petbet sent to me. Oh, Dr. Petbet, bless you. You exceeded yourself. Oh, what a dog. Oh, let me see what he write about you. Relax. I'll be with you in a minute. Dear Igor, today I am sending you a bull mastiff. This dog originated in England in the last century. The purpose of this dog was to keep poachers off the land. Poaching was a very serious offense and it had a severe penalty. So they had gamekeepers that time and the gamekeeper's life would be in danger because when he tried to catch the poachers, then the poachers might kill him to avoid the severe penalty. You see? So they were there to protect the land as well as the gamekeeper. They tried using the old English master, but that didn't work. Then, because they were slow and they were too friendly, then they tried to use the English bulldog, and that didn't work either, because he was too vicious and he would attack the poacher and the gamekeeper. So you see, Igor, they tried a clever thing. They crossed the two breeds and they put 60% Mastiff and 40% Bulldog. And the result was a fine Bull Mastiff like you have here. You see, this dog proved to be excellent. You see, this dog would move in silence. Oh, you're getting very, very... Oh, look at this. <laughs> Wait a minute. Come walk around here with me. Go for a walk. Is that better? I'll finish the letter later, if you like. Oh, you can't. I'll finish it now. Anyhow, and he would, you see, this dog would move in silence, and he would pounce on the poacher, 
and then he would bark and the gamekeeper would come running and catch him. He's like a policeman dog. Anyhow, when chasing the poacher, the bull mastiff would always overtake him. He would trip him up and he would pounce right on top of him. And that's it. For his size, he's very agile. He's a good family dog and he can live in an apartment, but he must be taken far. His walks and his exercise is very important. And that Dr. Petvet always tells me, it's very important. There's very few in North America of these dogs. And I'd like to keep you if I could. Hang on, hang on. Hello? Oh, don't go away. Uh, no, no, not you, Dr. Petvet. I was talking to the dog. <laughs> Sometimes I talk to them, yes. Oh, I can keep him. I'll just hang on the slot. Hang on, hang on. Mr. Slot! Mr. Slot! Can I keep this bull master fellow? Would you kindly repeat that, please? <laughs> you heard what he said. Yes, <laughs> this is such a lovely dog named Turkey. <laughs> Aye, but you must remember that pets is friends. Come. Would you like to date my sister? No, I, I know what you mean. Don't go away. We'll be back, I'm afraid. You know, we tried playing Monopoly today, and the termites ate everyone's houses and hotels. Why, they even ate the community chest. I know. It's not funny. Lunch time! <laughs> I told the old professor that I thought that very soon mankind would spend his holidays in standing on the moon. He said I couldn't do that because I'd get too big a fright. That's not the place for me to be because I'm afraid of height. And anyway, the whole idea sounds just a little dumb. From where I stand, the moon appears no larger than my thumb. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and men and women, and people? I am the professor, Julius Sumner Miller by name, and I have my glasses to better to see you with and by. Our last engagement was on the beautiful behavior of a bob on a string. And I said, let us set up an arrangement where we have one 10 centimeters long, one 40 centimeters long and one 90 centimeters long and I hope at once that those of you who have some mathematical spirit would detect the significance of these numbers 10, 40, 90 but if you don't I shall reveal it in due course then I said we would count 20 oscillations of the one we shall do that several times and get an average and write it down then 20 oscillations of another Nothing sacred, you understand, about 20 oscillations. We could count 72 oscillations or 11 or scumpty 2 Right. And 20 oscillations of this one. And write it down. 20 oscillations. If I did 20 oscillations in my home place, it would be uh, certain numbers which are right. And if we did it in this castle with heavy stone walls and gravitation a little different, it might be slightly different, but the relationship of the numbers would be unaltered. And in my place, the numbers would be as follows. Watch it, because they are beautiful to contemplate. 20 oscillations of this one would be 13 seconds. 20 oscillations of that one would be 26 seconds. And now I hope those of you who are mathematicians already and who are appointed in an earlier program to the order of Pythagoras because you are good mathematicians would already see at once instantaneously that 20 oscillations of this one 
should be 39 seconds. Ah, there is lying here, no longer hidden, some beautiful stuff. These numbers are in the ratio of 1 to 4 to 9. These numbers are in the ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. And so you see that 1 is the square root of 1, 2 is the square root of 4, and 3 is the square root of 9. And whatever we'd get here for another would be the square root of that, and so on. And so, let me walk over here and write on the blackboard the truth that emerges from this discovery, that the period of the simple pendulum, the time for one oscillation, or for 20, is proportional to the square root of the length. Now, those of you who will study physics or have a little, have already encountered in a textbook and in the student teacher's lectures that the period of a simple pendulum is to a close approximation, 2 pi times the square root of L over G, and there I have what I told you already, but much more prettily arrived at. Beautiful thing, beautiful. Having done that. And I am reminded of Tycho Brahe, the Danish astronomer, and Kepler, the German. Imagine, Tycho Brahe spent 30 years studying the heavens and writing tens of thousands of pages of notes with which he could do nothing, because he was a very good observer, but a very poor mathematician. And fortunately, there fell into confluence with him the German astronomer Johannes Kepler, who spent 26 years reading the detailed numbers and arrived at the mechanism of the planets. Now, we haven't done anything on such grandiose scale, but it is still a beautiful thing to contemplate. Extraordinarily so, and you must not regard it as trivial. I think this motion is enchanting to witness, and you should too. I shall see you another day. That's a wrap. Igor. Yes, master. Fantastic. I am about to bring to mankind the most significant thing in centuries. What, have you invented the rocket, master? Igor, how many times have I told you I am not a rocket scientist? I'm not. Igor, I... I have invented something new. Get ready for my new invention. Yes, Igor, and I call it the electric package opener. Electric package? That's right, and I will explain its function to you. Now, my last detail, by merely inserting this light bulb into the top of the cabinet. There, thusly done. Then I will throw this switch, and you know what will happen, Igor. All of the energies about us will be all concentrated into the bulb. The bulb, in turn, will throw it into the box. And when the package is inserted, then all of these energies with the variable bang torque converters will converge upon the package and rip off all of the wrappings and ribbons. Will it open the package, Master? No, Igor, it will close it. Now, in order to test my theory, I need a package. Give me a package. Well, Master, I have a... There's this... No, not this package, Master. What is that? The, the new excabubarator costs 379 and a half gulars. It's the last chance to make Brucey work. Wait Can't a give minute. Me give me that, Igor. But, 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 Master... Don't you understand? But, Master... Listen, this will work. I know it will work. Who'll need Brucey? I can buy six Brucey's when this works. I'll make a billion gulars. Yes, This but, is just the thing to test it. Something significant. All right. Let's put it to the test. Ha! Huh. Who cares about Brucey if this works, eh? In you go. Now. All right, Igor. I... I am about to taste immortality. <laughs> Your insurance company will be pleased about that, Master. Don't be funny. All right, ready for the countdown. I'm ready, Master. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, this is fantastic. And now, this will revolutionize the Christmas business, everything. It's going to work, I know it. It's fantastic. I can just tell them. Oh, oh what, what have I done to blows? Yesterday. <laughs> Hush up your yelling. It's time for the telling of stories of evil and vice. Your skin color is whitening. Your stomach starts tightening. The blood in your veins turns to ice. Though this thunder and lightning may seem awfully frightening, the librarian thinks it's quite nice. <laughs> Silly fellow. enough. Give the barber a pinch of snuff. <laughs> All right, I'll get you with this one. This will horrify you. Tickly, tickly. Tickly, tickly on your knee. If you laugh, you don't love me. <laughs> Heavy stuff. Sing, sing. Sing, sing, what shall I sing? The cats run away with the pudding string. <laughs> do, do, what shall I do? The cats run away with the pudding, do. <laughs> I got you that time, didn't I? Huh? Huh? Tell me. Don't tell me. Didn't even phase on you. But I'll get you. I'll get you sometime. You'll see. But until that time, I go with it. And so the librarian says... Oh, 
Well, if you can't fix it here, can you leave us a courtesy set? <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? A commercial again. Don't be frightened. <clears throat> Hello, Frankenstein Blood Clinic in the Reds in sixteen forty three. Good evening. I would like to complain about delivery. I ordered the quart of Diet Coke four months ago, and it still hasn't arrived. <laughs> you say, how many times do I have to told you we do not deliver blood? Well, all right then, I'll pick it up. <laughs> you don't seem to understand. We don't give out blood, we take in blood. <laughs> well, of all the nerve. All right, goodbye. Get that one, Igor. It's my phone. It's not my phone. Hello? Hello, this is your computer dating programmer. Yes? We have tabulated all the information and we have a date for you. Oh, great. When will she be over? About eight. Oh, thank you. Hot dog. She's going to be here at eight. I can't wait. I hope she's not too late. My computer date. Oh, where I'm putting on my top. 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 Where I'm going to be all right. And then I'm going to do my hair. Where I'm putting on my top. Where I'm doing my high Beautiful. <laughs> Igor, come here, please. Yes, master. All right, Igor. What is this all about? <laughs> How do I look, master? You look like a million dollars. Thank all green and wrinkled. Oh, thank you very much. What is the occasion? My computer date. She's coming tonight. She'll be over just now. I sounds like her. I want what she looks like. There she is. Let's go and take a look. Master. Igor. Hello. I'm your computer date. Uh, oh, Master. Oh, Igor. That being done. Buana Clyde was passing through the lower Ganges Basin when all at once he found it was a tiger he was facing. The tiger was a funny sort, Buana later said, because I noticed that he had a hat upon his head. The tiger said, don't be afraid, this won't take long to do. You sneak about to study us, well now, we'll study you. <laughs> which means it's Zany Zoo time! Hello, 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 and how nice of you to drop into Zany Zoo. Yes, that's right, I'm Bawana Clyde Batty, at your service, and always a pleasure to see you here, right at Zany Zoo. Now, we're going to show you today or rather, show you the cry of the cucamonga bird. Now, listen very closely. It's quite difficult. Sleep, whoop. Sleep, whoop. There, that. Excuse me, please. The inevitable. Hello, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Can't answer the phone without me at. Hello, one of Clyde Batty, yeah? Yes, that was a cucamonga bird, sir. You did like it. Well, I'm ever so glad that you called to tell me so. Right you are, sir. Right. Thank you so much. Oh, that's a very kind gentleman who liked my cry of the cucamonga bird. Did you? Well, if you did, why don't you write in and tell me about that? Because I'd like to hear from you. All right, now let's get to our film for the day. Because we've got something very, very special to, to show you. And you're just going to love it. And it's all the way from Australia. Now, here's Australia right here. See that? Right on the map there. Oh, that's a very far away place, that is. All right, now let's get to the projector. 
and get all the reels in place here. There we go. Get the dials set up. And now we're going to watch our film, aren't we? All right, let's get it all going here. And what are we going to see today? Something very special, I'll tell you. Hello, hello, hello. And look at that, would you? That's a koala bear. That's right, Nick. You look at that. Look at that. Now, now they get to be about two feet high, and they weigh about 33, 35 pounds. Now, see how they climb the trees. See that? Well, they live in the trees, you see. And notice how their claws. Look at that. They're all hooked there, so they can climb the trees easy. And they feed off the eucalyptus leaves. That's right. And they also get their moisture from the leaves. They don't drink water. It's quite interesting, I think. Oh, isn't it? Look at the small eyes, tufted ears, eating away at the leaves. Oh, dear little creature. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's, he's just like the teddy bear. As a matter of fact, that's what his nickname is in Australia. They call him the teddy bear. Isn't he a kid? They've been known to live up to 20 years. Isn't he a darling? Oh, I love him so. Hello there. Hello, mate. Come on, give us a kiss. Oh, you're so cute and fluffy. Now, my goodness. You know, it's very sad, too, because in the last hundred years, oh, they've, they've seriously decreased in their population. Yes, yeah, because of forest fires and some notchy men sometimes, you see. So that now the koala bears live in sanctuaries and you're not allowed to touch them. And it rightfully so, because they're so cute. Who'd want to harm a little thing like that? Oh, I just love them. I just love them. Look at that. Oh, just, oh there's another one. Cute, aren't they cute? Oh, my goodness. Just love it. Every second of it. It's just lovely. Oh, you're so cute sitting up there, mate. Lovely, lovely. Oh, look at them sleeping. Isn't that cute? Oh, my goodness, my goodness. Wasn't that something to see now? Well, I must say, wasn't that interesting? That's what I think. Well, now, I want to Claude Batty saying goodbye for now. And if you want to go to the zoo, you can, you know. And that's just the same as Zany Zoo. Get a hat like mine, if you like. And you just go along and look at all the beautiful animals that they have there. And if you're ever going to hunt, hunt with a camera. Isn't that right? Right you are, mate. So, cheer bye until we see you next time, OK? Right, go to your local zoo and have your own safari. And ooga booga, which means... If, if you ride in the subway train at midnight, there's nothing like getting a good night's sleep in the morning when the sun's coming up today. All right, that's enough for now, and we'll see you very soon, right? Right, all right, mates, I'm coming, I'll bring my camera. A commercial what? <laughs> Leave it. I, Wolfie Wolfman, you are beautiful. Today, we're going to break a record. <laughs> Just putting you on, gang. Just putting you on. Having a ball here at E-E-C-H. Radio station. Yuck. Yeah. Fantastic music. I beg your pardon. I didn't promise you a rose garden. Hello. I am the wolf man. What? What do you mean I'm bugging you? Well, I am the wolf man, and if you don't like it, you can just switch off. Well, guess they showed me. Anyway, your apology is accepted. What's that? Let's, let's work together. Good idea, babe. You do that. You got it. Okay. Goodbye. Get back one of y'all. In the long walk. Frightenstone, 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 and Frightenstone. Practicing lawyers at work. Uh, would you guys be willing to take our case? Well, if you guys would be willing to take one of our cases. <laughs> what kind of cases do you have? Uh, a case of Dracula. Anything, anything at all, as long as you'll take our case. <laughs> Master, I just sold a case of Dracula. Wonderful, Igor. You are a magnificent salesman. <laughs> There's only one problem, Master. What is that? We have to take this guy's case. 
Que savoir, digo. <laughs> a case for the Flighting Stone lawyers, defenders of freedom and justice, and the Transylvanian way. Did you find out what kind of trouble he is in? Yes, did you know I never ask personal questions. <sighs> then how do you expect the Flighting Stone lawyers, defenders of freedom and justice, and the Transylvanian way to help these poor souls? I never thought of that, Pastor. You never think of anything. Answer me, Paul. Hello? Hello. Uh, my case has taken a turn for the worse. Huh. That's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. Aren't you going to help me, honey? Please. Of course we are. Stick with us. You will be bound to be sued. Uh, I mean, you will bound to be loose. Uh, I mean, no, you will win eventually. I hope. Where do you live? I live on the corner of Knife and Spoon, by the fork in the road. I'll be right over. Have nothing to fear when Ego is near. Master, I better get my case. Because I have a case, you see. Ego. <laughs> yes, Master. You are so big. How come your case is so small? <laughs> it's a briefcase, Master. <laughs> a briefcase? That's a little humor about it, Igor. You're very funny to that. Yes, oh, Master. Where are you going in such a lot? I know where the man who needs help is now, and I am going to help him. Well, what is his problem? I forgot to ask. Try it this time. Oh, yes. Hello? Listen, where have you been? I, I've given you all the information I can. Yes, I know, but I forgot to ask you, what is your case all about? I have a bad case of, of, of the German measles. Well, my goodness. Yeah, I know, it's over here. I guess that last guy got him. The castle lights are growing dim. There's no one left but me and him. When next we meet in Frankenstone, don't come alone.